Sometimes in life you just read the perfect book for the perfect time. Such has been the case when I read Stones of Light, book two in the Threadlight series by Zach Argyle. With all of the chaos that's going on in my life right now, I have had a hard time wanting to dive into a brand new fantasy world, which is great, because I'm the type of guy that perpetually doesn't finish series. Since I've been struggling to get into new worlds, it's a perfect time to revisit familiar characters and be able to experience a book story without having to start from scratch, which is usually what I do, because I just start lots of series and never finish them. Thankfully, I read Voice of War not that long ago, which is the first book in this series, and I do have a review for that, which is available in the cards if you want to click that link. But basically, my thoughts on that book were, it wasn't perfect and it wasn't my favorite fantasy book, but it was definitely also, at the time, kind of what I needed, which was something a little bit lighter. It used some fantasy tropes that I like, that I thought I'd seen before, used in different ways, but I didn't think it was derivative, I thought it was fun. The cool thing is that Argyle stepped up his game in book two, which is pretty much what everybody says, so yeah, I agree with those people. But what we're looking at here is an exploration of a lot of my favorite elements of all fantasy. You see, the thing about fantasy is, the reason why I read weed, the reason that I like to read fantasy instead of most normal people books is because I want to read something that is fantastical and different than what I can experience in my everyday life. I don't love dramas because I live in one, but I like magic because it's freaking cool. And what Stones of Light does is it takes the magic elements that were in the first book and it takes the mysteries that were in the first book and it expounds them in awesome ways and it also explores them more in awesome ways. So you get answers, you get more questions, you get to dive deeper into the characters that you already liked or disliked from the first book and it just sort of pushes them all even further. Further. I mentioned in the review for the first book that that first ending is really, really awesome. This just expounds upon that and it continues to push forward the story in a way where I am sad that I have to wait for book three. It's coming later this year. I don't have to wait that long, but I don't like to wait. I'm a selfish and impatient person. I say as I leave so many other series completely unfinished. So let's expound upon this a little bit more. If you thought that my review for book one sounded interesting, but before you jumped in, you wanted to make sure that it was going the right direction. That is true. I think it is going the right direction. While there are still elements that you've seen before in other fantasies, I still think this incorporates them in a way that is fun and interesting for the story. I still don't think it feels derivative. And I think that this story introduces more original elements while turning some tropes on their head. And once again, plot lines are moved forward. We still don't fully understand what's going on. There are things hinted at that I love, and I just want to see if the payoff is good. Overall, I really just enjoyed this experience. I want to read the next book very badly. I think the cover for the next book looks freaking awesome. And I've said this many, many times before. I almost always like books that I really like the cover for. Not always, but almost always. There are a few things in this book that I still didn't love. There are some character moments that I feel should have had more gravity than they did. I don't know if it's because they happened fast or there wasn't enough time to dwell on the consequences before more things happened because thank goodness this book has a fast pace. Like I said, in some ways I felt like it was a negative because we didn't get to dwell as much on things that I wanted to dwell on, but having that fast pace keeps you moving forward. It keeps the pace from becoming dull. Speaking from the pace becoming dull, one of the things that that bothers me about this book, and it's not just this book, it's a more common thing that I'm seeing is, there is the idea of quest fantasy. And quest fantasy often includes elements of traveling from place to place, and there are lots of pages dedicated to traveling. The character struggles on the road, the conversations that they have, this is a good time to build character elements. More often than not, I'm seeing modern books not wanting to dwell so much on the travel. And I feel like both in the first book and in Stones of Light, there are elements where there are places that are separated geographically, and there are characters that travel from point A to point B. And the way that Argyle and many modern authors present these parts is it's very quick because they don't want to bog down the pace with walking. If you want an example of this, the first Wheel of Time book has too much walking. If you like Wheel of Time, fight me, but also you're wrong about this one. Now, like I said, this is a taste thing. It keeps the pace moving quickly. It keeps the plot moving forward. As someone that when I'm in my right headspace, I enjoy some slower paced things, some sitting in the moments. There is a lot of traveling that happens between these two books that is sort of skipped over. And the net effect to me is that I feel like I'm missing out on world building. I'm missing out on potential character conversations. I'm missing time to just sit 
and dwell with the major events of the story that have happened. Personally, I just would have enjoyed more time to sit and rest with some of this stuff, more time to build on these relationships in a way that didn't feel like every, how do I explain this? It's almost like the opposite of the Patrick Rothfuss problem. Like Patrick Rothfuss sometimes has just long moments in the story where it feels like there's no reason for this to be here. And Argyle leans much more towards the, hey, we want to make sure that critical stuff is here. We're going from critical path to critical path. I would have enjoyed personally more dwelling time. Worth noting, I think it's semi-clear when you read this book that there is some obvious Sanderson inspiration. And that's also a little bit of a hard thing to pin down, mostly because some of the things that Sanderson does that I think are super cool, it's kind of... It's the equivalent of copywriting something generic. There are certain things that Sanderson has nailed and executed to a point that it's not the most revolutionary thing in the entire world, but it almost feels like his thing. So when other authors use similar ideas, it feels like it's either homage or inspiration from Sanderson when it doesn't have to be, but it probably is. There are a couple lines in particular that have almost direct correlations to things from the Stormlight Archive. Not that I'm complaining because I'm a huge fan of the Stormlight Archive also. But that could potentially bother some people. It didn't bother me. That one didn't bother me. As both a positive or a negative, depending on your preferences again, sometimes characters make decisions that are bad and stupid. But I do think that makes for interesting character development. I don't think we're doing the CW effect where characters make the stupidest decision at every possible junction just to make the story more dramatic. I think the character decisions in the story mostly make sense. But if you find yourself frustrated when characters make stupid decisions, you might have some beef with some parts of the book. I mostly just wanted to slap around the people and be like, dude, what the frick? But yeah, this one really worked for me. It was a great time for it. If you were in a similar headspace to me where you're looking for, I want to experience epic fantasy, but I can't go like Malazan level insanity. I need something more digestible, but still is good enough to like trigger my I like good fantasy sense perfect series for that. Book 2 elevated and brought that oh so beloved mystery. I love when books don't have to give me all the answers to everything at the same time. Sometimes you leave a mystery and you can theorize about that crap. I love it. I love it. Book 2 has that. I recommend you go check this out if anything I said sounds interesting. Have you read this book? What was your favorite parts? Are you super looking forward to book 3 like me? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more videos from me in the future, please hit that subscribe button. If you hit the bell, you'll get notified every time I post a new video. If you want to talk about this topic or anything else, you can check out the Discord, which is linked down below for everybody to join. Join the book, friends. We have a lot of fun over there. Every single day, we're doing the Wordle, Dordle, and now there's a Quartle where there's four Wordles at the same time. Plus, we talk about food a lot, books, other things. I hope to see you there, and I hope to see you again in another video soon. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. Sleep, no one ever get enough. Always looking out tired. Sleep, no one ever get enough. If I don't show up, I might get fired. Sleep, no one ever get enough. Always looking out tired. Sleep, no one ever get enough. If I don't show up, I might get fired.